Okay. Well, thanks so much for your time. So the project I'm going to speak to you about today is the uh, Collingwood Yards um, Creative Precinct in Collingwood. Uh, it's bounded by Johnson Street on the north and Perry Street on the south, and it's uh, like a couple of streets away from Smith Street there on the west side. So about seven years ago, we won a design competition to turn what was then a derelict complex of buildings into a home for uh, creative businesses, artists, uh, art galleries, uh, hospitality, and also a radio station. It's famous for having one of the last two remaining uh, Keith Haring murals in the world. But yeah, when we took on the project, it really was a derelict complex of buildings. Um, one of the key challenges was how to turn this into a building where the public could truly interface uh, with the, um, I suppose, creative industries within the buildings. So the first thing we tried to tackle is how can we make this part of the neighborhood? How can the public really flow naturally through this project? So the Johnson Street facade is this big imposing uh, art deco um, building and really the obvious entry was this art deco entrance through the middle but this says all these wonderful art deco things but not many of those things are very welcoming so what we decided to do instead uh, and i suppose we almost call this the path of most resistance which was rather than using that as the main entrance uh, we actually punched a new opening into the heritage facade and thankfully we were successful in arguing for this because it completely unlocked the precinct it allowed us to um, have universal access to the upper level of this uh, upper ground floor of this building. It also allowed us access into the beautiful courtyard in the middle, which I'll show you in a moment. So from an axonometric point of view, you can see that's the Johnson Street interface and the lovely courtyard in the middle. So that new punch through the building allowed us access on grade to that building, uh, to that sort of courtyard in the middle. And then there's another connection through to Perry Street, which I'll show you in a moment. It allowed us as well to strip all the kind of typical signifiers of building entry. Um, there's a whole story about these gold columns. If we're fortunate enough to be shortlisted, I'll tell you on site. I don't have time in the next six minutes or so to tell you. Um, but the materiality of this opening is micro perforated stainless steel. The idea with that is to really sort of suck the colors of the courtyard through to the street. Um, and it has been a very successful uh, new uh, entranceway for the precinct. People sort of very naturally flow through that. A lot of people use it as a shortcut. We were also conscious of this as a public building, really having uh, the ability to sort of change its character very dramatically during festivals and events. So we worked with the lighting designers to come up with a fully programmable LED system through the whole precinct. And it allows the, especially the new entrance to be uh, to go through a whole different sort of color changes, uh, depending on the kind of mood of the festival or, or event. And also inside that walkway, you get these wonderful sort of uh, really dramatic color effects happening as well. Um, the, uh, here's an axonometric and it really shows you one of the key challenges we had. We have this wonderful courtyard in the middle, landlocked by buildings. So the second move we made to really make this a sort of public uh, building was we had a little dead end laneway on the right hand side here and we cut through these two um, these windows we actually cut into this room to make a sort of public thoroughfare uh, and little sort of mini shopping arcade so we'll go on that journey now uh, we worked with tcyk wonderful um, uh, signage and uh, wayfinding uh, consultants um, and then as you step through, you can see these windows, which we cut down to the ground to create this new shopping arcade. Now, often with these moves, it's tempting to put a sort of big black metal steel loop around, but no, we were really keen to actually show the fact we had originally had windows here that we cut them down to the ground there. So uh, we introduced new glazing along here to give it a more of a, uh, I suppose, almost uh, urban sort of feel, I suppose, and to really make sure these felt like uh, uh, shop fronts for these. Uh, so they've got your Uro bookshop and a wonderful ceramicist there and social studio as well. And it allows the public to then circulate in. So it's a really beautiful courtyard. Um, and the courtyard has become a successful um, public space. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's very well used. And then it's also a venue for markets and festivals and events as well. Here's a view of the back of the building as it was in the existing. And this is really talking to the second challenge we had, which is how do we bring these old buildings up to code? So rather than stuffing around too much with existing buildings, put new lifts and stairs in, we put those new lifts and stairs on the outside of the building and try to make them sculptural objects of beauty uh, in themselves. So um, the idea with these staircases was that they'd allow you to sort of circulate up. They fulfilled the function of universal access and fire stair and communication stair, but we also wanted them to be a way for people to interact in a different way with the precinct. 
Um, you have to excuse this terrible photo, but there's actually my daughter in the foreground, and this is the top of the Yuyangs. And I really took inspiration from the way the National Park Service does these wonderful sort of sculpted staircases around geological and uh, sort of natural features. So you can see very clearly that we took inspiration from that idea. And we were keen as well for these um, to get people up into the canopy of the beautiful trees we had on the precincts as well, and very much as well to invite the public up through the building. Um, and you can see here the way it sort of interacts with some of the fragments and, and remnants on the existing site. That's the second one, and that sort of really unlocks circulation to that little building there. Here's the back of the courtyard looking towards Perry Street. That's the existing conditions. It's sort of quite a grim space without all the new openings. Jeremy and his team at Breathe have done some wonderful work to allow the ground floor to open up from a temporary basis. Um, and then what we did is we worked with Simone Bliss and her team at SBLA on the public realm, including the sort of little amphitheater seating, which really helps mediate the two levels. Um, and then that second lift element, you can see again, quite sculptural. This one doesn't have a stair, but rather these sort of oversized lift platforms. And look, one of the ideas really, you can see some more of Simone's lovely work in the foreground there. The idea with these lifts uh, and stairs was that they might inspire, you know, people to sort of interact with them in interesting ways. And one of the things that's been really wonderful is watching how the Center for Projection Art and other artists within the precinct have actually used these elements as a sort of quite a dynamic canvas in a way for their artworks. Uh, we've also had wonderful performances uh, on these platforms and uh, here's one of those acoustic performances happening there as well. And it also gives you a vantage point down onto the public spaces. Uh, we did this little brick detail, including a custom square brick on the corner, which allowed LED lights to wash up. And again, sort of into that whole idea. One minute remaining. No problem, thank you. Um, we were keen for the public to circulate up through the building. So we actually, here's an existing view of the sort of rather grim existing corridors. We stripped all those windows out and made them these external circulation spaces. So if we're fortunate enough to be shortlisted, we'd certainly like to show you the fact that the public does circulate up through all the spaces. Um, we also didn't want to sort of Botox these buildings. We left a lot of layers of history, even the kind of ugly things. You know, we wanted to be a very relaxed architecture. And look, if, uh, if we're fortunate enough to be able to give you a tour through, one thing that I haven't been able to convey in this short time is really the feeling of the spaces and the fact that it has become a really thriving uh, artistic and cultural community. And, and it has also been a place that successfully invites the public in. Uh, and so the public can, in fact, interface uh, with what's going on there in a sort of effective way. Thanks very much.